Next up, we need to define sola fide. And this is difficult because there's a lot of confusion, especially in the evangelical world. Um, a lot of people think that justification by faith alone is the idea that I have faith and then God does the rest. Um, that's not justification by faith alone. Um, generally, in the Reformed churches uh, and Lutheran churches, they look down on evangelical Arminians as compromising the gospel because they view faith as a human work that's done in, in some way that you could, on Reformed principles, claim credit for, um, which was, in fact, part of the entire reason why Luther wrote Bondage of the Will, uh, was to pretty much kill off that kind of idea or any kind of semi-Pelagianism. Uh, rather, sola fide is a much more narrow thesis, and this is going to be important to get clear about. So sola fide depends on the idea of created righteousness. So when Christ is on earth in Reformation theology and he's obeying the law and he's not failing to observe the law in any way, so he's not committing any sins of omission or sins of commission, he's um, kind of meriting righteousness. But this is not the righteousness uh, as Mr. Rogers correctly pointed out in his videos, it's not the righteousness whereby God is righteous in and of himself. This is a created righteousness. It's a created effect. Okay. And that will be important to, to keep in mind later on. Now, when I said you might want to do a screen capture, this is what you're going to want to capture here because you're going to use this later. So take a snapshot, put it off to the side, um, if it covers up my beautiful face, I really don't care. So just go ahead and do that. Um, but you're going to need to keep these categories in mind when we're looking at a number of patristic texts. So just take a moment and do that while I go through the rest of the um, items here. So um, on sola fide, faith is not intrinsically uh, valuable. It's actually empty and worthless before God with respect to justification. It has no inherent value. It's not a basis or a condition for, for justification at all. Um, so sometimes it's characterized by the, the empty hand, right? There, that it has nothing to, to offer, right? Uh, next is faith is viewed as an instrumental extrinsic cause, and therefore it's a conduit of justification, or it's a conduit for created righteousness or a created merit. So the idea here would be um, like my kidney is intrinsic to me, right? Or it's at least inherent in me. Uh, whereas a hammer that I use to make something, that's instrumental. That doesn't characterize me in and of, in and of myself. So um, faith is something that's valuable, not in and of itself on sola fide, but what you can use it to get or what it serves as kind of the highway or conduit for the transfer of that created righteousness, that created merit. Because the Reformed will tell you, they believe justification is by merit. It's just not your merits, right? It's Christ's merits. And then that brings us to uh, that Sola Fide views uh, justification as forensic or taxonomic reclassification. What does that mean? And this is important because a lot of times people use the term forensic and they're really confusing it with legal. And you can be legal or use legal or judicial language and not have this very narrow sense of forensic. So, for example, a non-forensic view of law or justice would be, and this is found in antiquity um, prior to the Reformation in certain cultures, where uh, you go to court you're declared guilty, and the belief is that that declaration actually makes you guilty. Or if you are declared righteous, that declaration actually makes you righteous. That would not be forensic. Why? Because it's classifying you, right, based on some internal state. Now, what does forensic mean? It means just the opposite, that you are not classified based on anything of your nature. It's entirely a matter of will. So the idea is God wills to classify you one way, and then that changes, and he wills to classify you another, regardless of your actual nature. So in this way, it's very nominalist. Nominalism is the thesis about universals or how things are classified. 
and that those classifications or taxonomies, those categories, are not real. They're just kind of created fictions or constructs. Next, defining um, sola fide, uh, we have a transfer of created merit. And then also that we have to keep a strict separation of activities between God and man. There can be no participation of human activity in justification. Um, and there, consequently, the matter is, is a zero-sum game. If I'm working, then God can't be working, and vice versa, in justification. Also, justification on sola fide is thought to be quantitative, as opposed to, we saw earlier, uh, qualitative. That is, justification has to be complete in order for it to count as actually being justified. So it has to be total. This is one reason why it has to be forensic, because a legal declaration isn't like partially just. You either are just or you're not. It's like being pregnant. There's no such thing as being a little bit pregnant. You either are pregnant or you're not pregnant. So <clears throat> it also excludes um, any kind of merit or merit uh, simplicator, right, in and of itself. There's no kind of merit allowed whatsoever on the part of the recipient of justification with respect to justification. So um, next up. Let's see here. I had to print this out because I couldn't get this to show the right way. So it's important to recognize that the difference between anti-Pelagianism and sola fide is that anti-Pelagianism is a wider thesis. So you can include lots of views in it, which are not sola fide. And this is part of the problem. Sometimes people come to the patristic text and they see a lot of anti-Pelagian language. And this actually happened to the reformers. Um, and they kept claiming Augustine for their position on justification, and they initially, Luther and Melanchthon in particular, confused Augustine's position of uh, being anti-Pelagian with being pro sola fide until they finally, Luther and Melanchthon, and eventually Calvin as well, all capitulated that Augustine did not teach uh, sola fide. He was very anti-Pelagian. He's the paradigm case of, of being an anti-Pelagian. -anti and that's going to be part of the problem, I think, with Mr. Rogers' presentation that we'll see as we go through, is that his position of having any kind of merit under the power of grace, um, if, if that's to be excluded, if that's a false gospel, um, if that's worthy of condemnation and you should reject that, well, then Augustine, the, the guy who's defending the doctrine of grace, is on that account, is also a Pelagian and of sorts and teaches a false gospel. That I, I think that's a little absurd. So it's important though to keep anti-Pelagianism and sola fide um, different. Sola fide is a much narrower um, thesis. 